Hey guys, it's Lizzie. So I am here to film a couple of videos, but the first one that I'm filming today is my review on Cemetery Tours. Now I finished this book last night. Um, I read it, well I started reading it because as I think I've mentioned before, my sister's, my sister, my friend's sister wrote this book, so I really wanted to read it and review it, so I thought I would film a review on it. Um, Overall, I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely, absolutely loved it. Um, and I was dying to actually have time to sit down and read it, and I finally, finally got that over the last couple of days, um, which meant that I could also include it in the year -a -thon for February. Um, so, if you want to know more about that, link will be down in the down bar. Um, but yeah, so this book, and this is where the spoilers will start happening. So, if you do not want spoilers, I would X out, but... It's a pretty fantastic book, so definitely go read it. Now, this book takes place in Dallas, so um, it's about a sister and a brother who move into this apartment complex not knowing that her brother is haunted, and that is why he's been feeling really, really ill. But this family is also unique, not just because her brother is being haunted, but because the main girl, Kate, was in an accident, and she doesn't... Um, she can't name colors or things. She can know, like, what the color is. She can recognize it and be like, oh, this is the color of Valentine Hearts. She just doesn't, she doesn't remember the names for colors. Um, but they meet Michael, who is also living in the apartment complex, and they don't know, but he can see ghosts. So he knows that there is someone haunting Kate's brother, Gavin, but, um... He doesn't quite know why this ghost is so angry. He's dealt with ghosts in the past. He tries not to have to deal with them, but he um, can tell that this ghost is really angry with them and doesn't know why. Um, sorry, I got a text message. So, basically... Kate and Michael kind of start getting interested in each other, but they can't really say, you know, like, I like you. So, out of the blue, um, Michael's friend Luke shows up, who Kate is obsessed with, because he is the TV host of a show called Cemetery Tours. So basically, it's kind of like Ghost Hunters meets... I'm not really sure, but... Um, basically he tries to talk to ghosts and he's had some luck with it in the past, um, but Kate ends up going on a date with Luke and they get to talking about her accident and how she kind of like feels about her current like living situation and she talks about how she had an issue with break-ins in her last apartment and how, you know, her brother's been really sick and ends up inviting Luke over to try and see if they have a ghost in the apartment and they find out they do and his name is Trevor. So um, Kate goes on to try and tell Gavin, you know, there's a ghost, I think he's haunting you, his name is Trevor. At that point Gavin shuts Kate up. He's like, no, we're not talking about this, there are ghosts, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and she's kind of a little weirded by his like how he deals with it so um basically she figures out she's not going to be looking for ghosts anymore because at least not in their apartment because gavin is not going to help with it and she can't figure out who trevor is and why he's obsessed with gavin or like why he's haunting him but um luke ends up inviting kate to come and look for ghosts at this cemetery in Waxahachie and um, tells her to invite Michael because Luke knows that Michael can see ghosts but Kate doesn't. So they go to this cemetery to look for ghosts and the caretaker tells them, you know, I've worked here forever, there's no like ghosts here, but have you tried the bridal barn? And there's a whole story about this girl that was murdered on her wedding day while she was getting ready in this bridal barn and how the guy who did it shot her or shot him after he stabbed her so he he being luke decides to go check it out 
and so Kate and Michael follow him. Once their kid's kind of like, I don't know if we should do this, she gets like kind of a bad feeling. But Luke basically gets to the point where he gets her to say, okay, let's do this. Um, and they go in and this ghost is mad. She is furious. She does not want people there. Um, and it basically comes out that Michael can see her. Um, so that's when Kate kind of finds out. And then they go back to Kate's place, Michael and Kate. And um, her family is waiting there to basically be like, I think it's time that you and Gavin come home. And like, come live at home for a while. And Kate gets mad. She storms out. Um, and Michael and her end up driving around and they go get food and then walk around this lake and they meet Grace, the ghost, um, her boyfriend, I guess. Basically, she was cheating on her fiancé with this guy and, uh, David, who, he is kind of angry, but not because, like, he doesn't want secrets being found. He tells... Um, Michael and Kate, well, he tells Michael and Michael tells Kate the entire story of what happened and how Grace and him were having an affair, but, you know, he didn't kill her. Um, and he asks for a message to be passed to his family saying that he didn't kill Grace, or that he didn't kill Grace, but they were having an affair. Like, he wanted them to know that he wasn't guilty of what had happened and that he didn't kill himself. So Michael and Kate and Luke go to his church to tell his family, um, and they try to pass along the message and the family gets really mad. So the family leaves and they end up talking to the pastor and he's kind of like, you know, you shouldn't be saying these kind of things to them. And Michael gets really mad that the pastor isn't believing him and goes, well, you have a ghost in your office and he looks and gives a description, which turns out the ghost is the pastor's son who committed suicide. So Michael and Luke and Kate all drive back towards Dallas, and um, Michael and Kate end up going back towards their apartment, and or they're at their apartment, and so they decide that they're officially dating, which is adorable. Um, but they decide that it's time to talk to Gavin about who Trevor is. And that's kind of where the climactic points in the book start to hit. So that's where I'm going to stop my review on the story. But I absolutely 100% recommend this book. I thought it was fantastic and wonderful. And I am definitely going to get the second book, second book, the second book really soon because I really want to find out what happens next. So. Overall, as I said, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. Really, really loved it. And I will see you guys soon. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. If you are participating in the February um, Bookathon, which is actually finishing up today, um, feel free to leave me what you read um, down below because I'd love to see. Um, and I might do a wrap up. I've only read a couple of books during this readathon, not as many as I'd like. So I may just do it as part of my February wrap-up at the end of the month. But yeah, leave it down below, and I will see you guys later. Bye! Mm -hmm. I'm booking myself a one-way flight. I gotta see the color in your eyes. You're telling myself I'm gonna be all right without you, baby. It's a waste of time. Our first date, girl, the seasons changed The God washed away in the summer rain You can't undo a fall like this Cause love don't